Hi friends, today I wanted to talk to you about the Maya Briggs Type Indicator and in particular why you should not be using it and if you come across people that are using it, uh, some information that you can pass on to them about why they shouldn't be using it as well. So we're going to start off by looking at what is the Maya Briggs Type Indicator or MBTI. Then going to look at some reasons why I think that it is garbage and I'm certainly not alone in this. And then I'm going to give you two recommendations of personality measurements that you should be using instead. So let's start off by taking a look at what is the Maya Briggs Type Indicator. So it's a self-report questionnaire. You run through a number of different questions, some of which are a little bit odd. It was developed by this pair here. So this is Maya and uh, Myers and Briggs. And to start with, it was Briggs actually just wanting to try and describe her son-in-law. The two of them don't have any scientific training, and that by itself doesn't necessarily mean they don't know what they're doing. But if we look at the standard psychometric uh, measures that we would ev evaluate a scale by, uh, we see that they did not do a particularly good job. So it was developed in the 1940s, and after doing these questions, you end up with a set of dichotomies. So for instance, you're either an introvert or an extrovert. There's four of these different dichotomies and they get put together to give you one of 16 different types. These types are represented by a four letter combination. And so this has been used pretty widely in HR and business despite the fact that psychologists and psychometricians for many years have been saying that it's pretty much astrology. Uh, I've heard people describe it as astrology for business people. And so I'm going to look at some of the reasons why this is not a good psychometric measure. Okay, so we'll start off with this quote, uh, Angus Chen in the Scientific American, calling it the worst personality test in existence. Uh, and he was not direct quoting, but saying this was the view of a number of uh, psychologists. And I've seen some pretty bad ones over the years. And I think the reason that people would call this the worst is the combination of it being bad, but also so widely used. Normally when you come across a measure that is just really badly done, it's not used very much. Whereas this one you come across quite regularly. Uh, and there's a real little market of kind of consultants that will go out and sell to HR departments with it. So let's have a look at some of the reasons why this is not a good measure. So the first one, is what we call construct validity. So construct validity is where the measure actually measures what it claims to measure. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky to get a handle of because you need other ways of measuring that particular thing. With the MBTI, we find that the introversion extroversion correlates somewhat with other measures, but the other three don't at all. So other measures, other scales that have been validated uh, and are considered to do a good job of measuring these things, they don't correlate with this, which suggests that MBTI is not measuring the things that it thinks it's measuring. It fails test-retest reliability. So one of the things we want is that if we are trying to describe a personality type, what type of person this is, uh, then these are things that we would not expect to change or certainly not frequently and not easily. What's been found with a number of studies is that the uh, Maya Briggs, people will do it, they'll do it again at some point, even quite short in the future, maybe a few weeks time, they'll get a completely different measure. It's also quite open for people to game. So if you're using it for recruitment, uh, it is quite easy for people to say, okay, what does this company want? I will make myself that for this test and then I will kind of change change myself back to uh, what I am in the future. Um, this is possibly a, a criticism of other psychometric measures as well, uh, but even for people that aren't trying to game it um, and are answering what they claim to be honestly, studies have found that it is just not consistently measuring and giving people the same results. There's some question about what we call the factor structure as well. So when we do psychometrics, we normally expect to see a particular structure. So when the different questions get answered, we would expect questions measuring the same things to correlate closely with one another. 
but not correlate with the measures of other things. What we see with Maya Briggs is that these are all over the place. They don't line up into those four categories uh, that the results come in. Okay, the next thing is that with these dichotomies, these are not normally things that we should treat as dichotomies. So if we take introversion and extroversion, we would normally treat this as a continuum, and other measures do so. So putting people into a single box, you are this thing, or you are this other thing, is not particularly useful, not particularly valuable, uh, and really takes away from the fact that for any of these things, there really is a continuum. And we would be interested in where someone falls on the continuum rather than just whacking them into a box. The way that results are presented with the combinations, they really make a big deal of combinations. But in fact, uh, the studies seem to suggest that the combinations don't matter. If you have three of the same letter, one different, that shouldn't make a big difference into you being a completely different person. It's only telling you about that one domain. The descriptions that they use are pretty vague, and this reminds me a lot of astrology. So in astrology, if you make them vague enough, then people go, wow, yeah, that really sounds like me. And if we look deeply at Maya Briggs, it does a lot of this. It makes these quite broad, vague statements, and this is one of the pe reasons that people seem to like it, and it kind of resonates, is they will read it and they'll go, oh, yeah, that makes sense, that sounds... That sounds like me, but the reason it sounds like you is not because it's being particularly precise, but in fact the opposite. It's being sufficiently vague that you interpret the statements and you just link it up to yourself. The final suspect thing is that most positive research has come from an institute that is fully funded by the Maya Briggs organization. So any time that we see all of the criticisms coming from lots of different independent researchers, but all of the positive research coming from a single place, we need to be a little bit skeptical about what's going on there. For references for all of these criticisms, one of the best places you can start is Wikipedia. They have a big list of criticisms with links to references. Uh, the psychologist Adam Grant has written a number of times about how bad Maya Briggs is. He is very well regarded, and so his pieces in popular media uh, would definitely be a, another place where you can read someone that is very, very knowledgeable and experienced uh, in the field of psychology talking about how bad it is. And beyond that, jumping into Google Scholar, you will find lots of published research. I talked about why it's so terrible. What should we be using instead? So my suggestion would be one of either what's called the Big Five, or Hexaco. So the big five is a five domain personality test and we can see it here, this diagram on the left. Uh, the five letters often uh, given the acronym either ocean or canoe because that's what they spell out. Uh, so we've got conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, neuroticism and openness to experience. And these have some subdomains underneath them they are measured with continuums. They're not just binary things where you are this or you aren't. Uh, and there has been a lot of research uh, showing that this is a robust measure. So mathematically, uh, it meets all of the uh, psychometric requirements uh, in terms of the items correlating with each other. The, the factors having a structure that link up to what the theory is and it has been very rigorously studied. So you will find that generally this is what a lot of research psychologists will use themselves and what they would recommend if you are trying to find out this kind of information about someone. There is this one on the right called the Hexaco, and basically it's an extension of the Big Five. They've added one more item, uh, which they have called honesty slash humility. The other five items are uh, pretty much the same things and they've just added the sixth one instead. So if you were to be doing any kind of personality testing, these would be the two that I would be recommending to use. And really above all, the message of this video is to be avoiding the Maya Briggs. It really is just not a good measure. Uh, it doesn't meet any of the basics of psycho psychometric properties that we'd, we'd be looking for and it's just wasting money. 
So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, If you have had some experience with the Myers-Briggs in your workplace, please comment down below. I think this should resonate with most people. Uh, Every so often I will strike someone that just really seems to love it. And I am sometimes a little bit confused by this. And it's someone who is otherwise quite smart. But what I found is that they just haven't seen other psychometrics. This is the only thing they've seen. Uh, The vague descriptions have kind of resonated with them. And in fact, if they were to start looking at and using either Hexaco or the Big Five, uh, they would get better insights and something that was much more useful to them.